God is good, and all the time, God is good. Our lessons this morning are from Isaiah chapter 12, verses 2 through 6, and also Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 14 through 20. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. From Zephaniah chapter 3. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exalt with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst, and you shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to, <coughs> to Jerusalem, do not fear, O Zion, and do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness, and he will renew you in his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing, as on the day of a festival. I will remove disaster from you, so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast. And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you home. At the time when I gather you, for I will make you renown and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Our message is entitled God's Song. Have you ever wondered what kind of world we would live in if there was no music? I mean, we all have different tastes in music, and sometimes we have very different tastes in musical. Driving home one Sunday after church, a, a father turned the radio in the car to a, a country station that he's liked, and immediately his son, 16-year-old son in the back seat, pipes up. He says, how can you stand that stuff? I mean, it's all stuff about dogs and pickup trucks and bars and, and just broken hearts. Well, knowing his son preferred loud rock music, his dad said, well, what's your music about? And the boy said, well, that's the, the beauty of it. Nobody knows. Now, regardless of our age or what we do for a living, most of us have at least one kind of music that we can really relate to. And for the rest of us, uh, the stuff out there, you know, the rest of the stuff is just background noise. We might hear it. That doesn't mean we appreciate it. It just simply doesn't do anything for us. And so we do our best to tune it out or simply get busy doing something else. And, and even if that means being somewhere else, we can't listen to it. What I've discovered regarding my own music taste is I tend to like the music that I can associate with. I mean, it, it speaks to me. Or it's something, the kind of music that somebody I I love or somebody that you know I appreciate the kind of music they like now when I was younger I could not stand opera or classical music and just making me listen to that stuff it was like tearing skin off the back of my you know my neck and today oddly enough I actually like some of the stuff I think Andrew Lloyd Webster Weber's uh, uh, Phantom of the Opera is really not bad. I actually don't mind listening to Sarah Brightman, uh, one of the original sopranos of that, that opera. And around Christmas time, I dig out some of my classical Christmas CDs. I mean, I never thought I'd like any of that stuff, but I do. I also never thought I'd like Jesus, but I do. And if you haven't figured it out, it's my goal that you would too. Uh, at this time of the year, it's almost as if we can't help if the music of God begins stirring in our soul. Now, Isaiah writes with great feeling. He writes, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and might. He's become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. And as long as the song of God stirs in our hearts, how can we not make this all known to those around us. I mean, how can you keep from, from humming that, that tune, that, that, that tune that you have stuck in your ear? Now, Isaiah's not alone. Zephaniah, he's running on the same track. And he writes, he says, Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel, rejoice with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. Now, on this third weekend of Advent, it really is a day of singing. And sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel, rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. And verse 17 of the same chapter says something, I think, a little bit more interesting. Listen carefully. The Lord, your God, is in your midst. A warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. Did you get that? God exalts over us with loud singing. I mean, God exalts so much over us that God sings over us. Now, in my mind, I can just picture... I can just picture a mom uh, singing lullabies over her child's crib. Now, can you imagine 
God singing over us? Can you imagine what it must have been of like the night the angels couldn't keep it back anymore? They just couldn't keep silent. But on that Judean hillside, the angels broke forth in a song, and the only one there to hear it were the stars in the sky and a few common shepherds of the land, some sheep. That's all that was the audience. Now, the simple truth is that you and I were made to praise the Lord our God. And Jesus made this clear on, on Palm Sunday when he had this subtle exchange with the Pharisees. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in his highest heavens. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. This was his answer. I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would shout out. Can you hear God singing? I mean, can you discern God's song in the wind or um, in the sound of a baby's cry? Even in the sound of life all around you. Can you see that even now he's singing to you and he's singing to me? And when it comes to Christmas, some, some people believe in the virgin birth. And they can picture in their minds and their hearts all the events surrounding our, our Lord's first coming. Others merely hope. Others, of course, they just think it's all big hoax. But still, this is the testimony of Zephaniah. And so many others in the scriptures, so God sings over us. There's a Christmas carol that was written in 1962. That's 58 years ago. And uh, it's entitled, Do You Hear What I Hear? And it begins like this. Do you see what I see? The night wind said to the little lamb. And the story of the song, it's quite simple. The, the night wind's the one that starts. He sees what Christmas is all about. And so he goes to a little lamb. And he tells the little lamb what he sees. The little lamb goes to the shepherd boy. The little shepherd boy, when he gets the meaning of Christmas... He goes to the mighty king and he says to the mighty king, do you know what I know? And then the mighty king says to everyone, everywhere in a deep gruff voice, listen to what I say. And then the mighty king makes the announcement, a child, a child will bring forth goodness and light. Do you see what I see and do you hear what I hear? If we listen closely, maybe we'll hear the voice of God singing over us. And you might wonder why we sing at Christmas time. Well, it's all about love. That's what Christmas is about. It's about love, even in the midst of a world filled with hate. It begins with God's love for us and in turn results in our love for God. And out of that springs forth a natural outpouring of love towards everyone else. And it all reaches its climax in that, that manger in Bethlehem. And here's what really happened in that manger. All of those Christmas songs really don't do the, the Christmas event justice. God took, human, took on human flesh in the birth of the Christ child. God came, God dwelt among us, and very few recognized him. But God was there in that stable that nobody else wanted that night. I mean, they were all in the inn or, you know, they were in their homes, all cozy and, and warm and everything. But God was doing what he needed to do. And that was reconciling this world to himself. And people have been singing about it ever since. Now, if you want your life to have more meaning, you got to expand your horizons beyond yourself. And first of all, you've got to embrace not just the possibility that there is a God who created the universe, but also you've got to embrace the possibility, the reality that God sent His Son into this world to be the Savior of us all. And you've got to picture not only the Son of God being cradled in Mary's arms, 
But you got to see him knocking on the door of your life and your heart. And once that happens, the possibility is right. It's like suddenly all the music around us is stereo. I mean, a whole new world of amazing sights, amazing sounds. But it's a world where the volume knob is missing. And in God's song, sometimes the music is very low, like a still small voice. Very audible, very barely audible, but yet at other times the music is deafening. I mean, there's nowhere you can go, no place you can escape it. It's so t- at times so barely soft, you can barely hear it, but at other times so full, you can't escape it. You can't run, you can't hide. Now the world was every bit as busy back then as it is now. Back when our, our Lord was born, there were jobs needed to be done, there were bills needed to be paid, there were family obligations that needed to be met. It was as hard to listen for the music of God then as it is now. But God's promise to us is the same now as it was back then. And those who will make a point of listening, they will hear. Back then, only if you recognize Christ in the stable of Bethlehem, there were some shepherds that everybody else seemed to forget. There were some magi from the east. Um, there was a humble carpenter and his bride-to-be, but not many. And yet that event turned the entire world upside down. It was enough to start the whole world singing. And so why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't all of creation sing around us? I mean, after all, the God of all of creation, the God of the moon, the stars, I mean, the wind, the waves, even the trees, that God sings over us. Can you hear it? I mean, listen closely. It's the song of everlasting love, everlasting hope, everlasting peace and joy. And it's the song of Jesus Christ, and may it always be singing to you and to me. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, we want that new song in our heart. We've noticed, Lord, at Christmas time, people seem to be a little bit kinder toward each other, maybe even a little bit more generous. But Lord, this song that you stir in our hearts, it should be a song that resonates from the very core of our being every day of our lives. And so, Lord, help us sing that new song this day and forever. Amen.